quickly recover? How do you provide immediately power so pumps can pump water out of it quickly? How do you make sure all that recovery resilient infrastructure is in place? And that's something that people are looking at today. The other one, of course, the big story, uh, as, as was just mentioned, shale gas and, and the lower price of natural gas and the fact that the resources of natural gas would last us uh, more than this whole century is, is really there in the, in, the, in the middle picture on the top. You see one of the modern natural gas power plants. They're being built everywhere, certainly in the US. They are a great match for renewable energy like solar and wind. They, they have great synergy between them. And the costs of planning for these facilities to be resilient and sustainable has come down dramatically with this kind of approach that I described as virtual project delivery approach. So for example, when we build an, a, one of these combined cycle power plants, like the one we're just building not too far from here in Virginia, it's a copy of a template that was built before, designed, has all the information in it, and the amount of engineering you need for a plant like that is less than 20% of what it would take to design a plant from scratch. That's a major impact, and that's why I, I have this belief that these technologies and all this don't have to add cost. On the contrary, we should look at them all as opportunities to lower cost. Uh, there's also, you know, we, we, like many others, believe in all of the above. Resiliency is also diversity of supply, and so we are involved in hydropower, in uh, solar power. We built one of the largest concentrating solar facilities in Ivanpah that's shown in the, in the diagram. And as mentioned, the cost of uh, PV power is coming down dramatically to the point that it's truly competitive. It's a game changer. All of these plants, by the way, use exactly the same approach that I showed for Smart City for their design and operations and maintenance. And of course, I just would like to finish on this one with liquefied natural gas. Liquefied natural gas, again, is a major business worldwide. It's bringing natural gas everywhere. And these facilities have an outstanding record of resiliency, sustainability, and just people feel comfortable that they would run for decades as they are. And now, surprisingly, we all would, we wouldn't have believed it several years ago, but we are building some of the largest facilities of that kind in the United States. We're going to become a major natural gas exporter. So the paradigms do shift, but the technologies really uh, uh, is what's driving them, just as it is for shale gas. Uh, just one couple of quick examples here. Uh, Crossrail. Crossrail is a major rail dig across London. It's a, one of the biggest changes in London's infrastructure since the Victorian age where all the train stations were built on the periphery and there's limited connectivity east-west. So this is a dramatic change in all of London and, and this was specifically designed for sustainability, for resiliency, for scenarios of what happens if sea levels rise, temperature rise, uh, people's mobility patterns change. This was all taken into account and in terms of sustainability, the, uh, we are working on this with an integrated team with the owners, the Transport for London. Uh, they wanted to lower greenhouse gas emissions throughout the life cycle of this project. And uh, surprisingly, 15% of the greenhouse gas emissions from 120 years of operation are in the construction phase. So we may put a dramatic effort to lower uh, those uh, greenhouse gas emissions. For example, you